God bless you, Reverend Stanley. <clears throat> thank you so much for um, opening up tonight. Uh, thank you for the devotion and the wonderful word that was read in the prayer. It is good to see y'all as we have come to this Saturday night before our second Sunday in the month of May. I thank God for each of you and your continued work. We're at day number 789 of studying uh, the living word of God and living in expectation as a result of it. Uh, let me see here tonight. We got about eight good people on this Zoom line. I thank God for you. Maybe one or two more may come on. And I thank God for all of you who are on the phone line. Uh, we are in the book of Philemon. For anybody who was here and weren't here the last night, Philemon is that book, P-H-I-L-E-M-O-N. And it's right behind Titus. We were in Titus last week. And just for the record, this is the last of the New Testament epistles. We have studied. I got to tell you how this. We have studied all the epistles, every one of them. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the Gospels. The book of Acts um, is the history of the New Testament the spread of Christ. And we have now, well, that's not true. I keep forgetting. We didn't do First and Second Corinthians. I'm sorry. But we have done Ephesians. We've done, in Romans, we've done Ephesians. So all of the smaller letters, Ephesians, uh, Philippians, Colossians, uh, First and Second Timothy, First and Thessalonians, uh, Titus, uh, we've done... Um, um, we didn't do Hebrews. Okay, we've done a small letter. So then we've done first, second Peter, first, second, third John, James. Uh, we've done Jude. We have covered a lot of ground. We've done first, second, and third John. I'm all excited about that. So if a voter pandemic started, you say, I ain't read much of the Bible. Well, I'll say, as your pastor, you have studied a lot of the Bible in the last 789 days. And we praise God for it. I'm going to say this. You cannot study the word of God and not get stronger. You can't. It just you can't. Right. If you you just if you study the word of God, you're gonna get stronger. So I want people to know that God has made you stronger during this season. And so just let's rejoice in that reality. Let's rejoice in that that God has done that through us. Tonight we're picking up in the book of First um, Philemon, rather. Uh, Paul. Last night we covered verses one uh, through seven, where Paul uh, uh, greeted them in verses one, two, and three. Um, he gave a description. Of, of Philemon. In other words, he told Philemon about himself. He reminded Philemon who he was because he was going to make, and, I, and it, it, it makes his spiritual sense because the Holy Spirit guided Paul to do this. And it was practical because it made Philemon look at himself and, 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 and come to the realization that what his, his testimony or the testimony that was given about him um, would, and, and how he responded to this request uh, Paul would be it would be strengthened uh, as a result of his living uh, as he was as as what he was known to be. He was known as a a man who had faith in God. He was known as a man who loved the Lord Jesus. He loved known as a man who loved all saints. He was known for a man who uh, um, was focused on and his life demonstrated that he uh, had, had doing every good thing that was in him that was given by Christ Jesus. Um, Paul, he, 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 and Paul in that verse 7 tells, hey, there are a whole lot of folk who are refreshed by the way you treat other brothers and sisters in Christ. And Paul says, because of that beginning, verse 8, he said, I, I want you to, to do something for me. He said, I'm begging you uh, as, a, as a mature Christian and as a prisoner of Jesus Christ, just like you are. He said, I, I beseech you, verse 10, for my son in Nisim. If Paul is deliberate in saying this is his son, he wanted Nisim to know that since he had left, he made uh, Onesimus may have left Philemon as a slave, but he's coming back as a saved man. And, and Paul is clear about that. Uh, and, and it's clear that his ministry, Paul's ministry was the conduit by which God used to bring Onesimus to relationship with God through Christ. He lets him know that Onesimus not only had come to Christ, but Onesimus had been helpful to him while he was in jail. He acknowledges, verse 11, that, that Onesimus may have been a problem. He may have been unprofitable. Now he is profitable. And just as a side note, Philemon means to, a prof, to be profitable. And so uh, he's saying now that Philemon, listen to this, Philemon is now living up to his name. I got to stop there again. This one part of the Bible study lesson. Don't you want to live, don't we want to live up to our name as Christians? Don't we want to live like Christians so that people see us? I don't care if we got on a sweatsuit or a pair of shorts or running shoes, that they see us as Christians because of how we live. Not how we, not how we dress. Paul says, Omnisimus is now living up to his name. And as children of God, we must live up to our name as Christians. Verse 12, Paul said, I've sent him back to you. And I'm asking that you will receive him with the same love that you, that I, you will receive me. 
Paul says, verse 13, Paul said, I would have kept Onesimus with me. I really would have. He said, but I, I want it because he has very helpfully ministered to me in the bonds of the gospel. Paul says he was helpfully ministered to me um, in the gospel and while he was in bonds and in the bonds of the gospel, meaning that as we are connected together in the, in the gospel, he ministered to me in that, in, that, uh, in that way as well. In other words, what I hear him saying, Paul is saying, that, that as he discussed the gospel, as he just talked about the gospel, he shared the gospel with Onesimus, perhaps Onesimus had good questions or perhaps Onesimus had good clarity um, that, that may have inspired him um, more in his walk with the Lord. And that's the thing about talking to other Christians. When you talk to a Christian and y'all on the same page, isn't it inspiring? Don't it refresh you, revive you? When you're talking to somebody who know the Lord and they know the Lord and y'all can testify together, that's, that's what Paul was saying that Onesimus was doing for him. But in verse 14, Paul says, now, I couldn't do it, though. I couldn't keep Onesimus with me um, because I wanted you to receive him back, not because I made you do it, because you wanted to do it. Paul says, I'm asking you, I'm not telling you, I'm asking you to receive him willingly, not because you were made to do it, because you wanted to do it. But in verse 15 is what we're picking up tonight. Paul says this, for he says, for perhaps he therefore departed for a season that I should just receive him forever. I love this right here. Paul is saying, hey, Philemon, yeah, maybe it was God's will that Onesimus run away because he left you as a servant, but now he is coming back as a brother. He left in one condition, he came back in another condition. Just so we'll be clear, verse 16 makes it even clear. He says he's not a servant now, but he's above a servant. Really, Philemon, Onesimus left you as servant, but now he's coming back as your brother, a brother beloved in Christ. He said he's coming back to you as a close son to me, special to me. And he says, and what I'm asking you to do is the same thing that you would do for me. I want you to do it to him. In the flesh, Paul said, if you would give me a meal, give him a meal. If you would hug me, hug him. If you would give him a room to stay in, give, give me a room to stay in, give him a room to stay in. If you would let him ride your donkey, let me him, if you would let me ride your donkey, let him ride your donkey. And he said, and greet him in the Lord the same way you would me. That's the, the, the beauty of this verse. We talked about it last night. This, this chapter is about reconciliation. Reconciliation really for the Christian is not partial, it's complete. Reconciliation for the Christian is never content, contentious and it's never contingent. In other words, people don't argue about reconciling either you do or you don't and it's not contingent but some people say well if they do if they apologize to me i'll accept it back no reconciliation is an act uh, is an action of the individual particularly the believer who says you know what i know they talked about me i know they did me dirty i know they stole from me whatever the situation is i know they mistreated me but i'm going to take them back whether they say i want to come back or not that, that's what that's what paul is referring to here when he says um in the flesh and in the lord he said, verse 17, if you count me a partner, if you count me a partner in the gospel of Christ, I want you to receive him as you would me. Paul said that about three times in this section. Paul says, I want, and that's the way Christians have to treat each other. We can't treat one somebody better than the other somebody. We can't say, well, they just came to Christ. We got to treat them different. I don't care if it's somebody who's been saved 50 years or somebody who's been saved five minutes. Guess what? Our responsibility is to treat them as a part of the body of Christ. Now, um, Deacon Thomas, I know you got some several siblings. You had several siblings, did And y'all were different in age, weren't you? But your oldest brothers and sisters love you. They didn't say, well, he was a baby or he was a knee baby. what they say? I love, they loved all of their brothers, didn't they? That's how they did it. That's what Christ calls us to do. We love everybody because they are our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know how they do it? That's how we're supposed to do it. And that's what Paul is saying here. If you love me, love him. If you receive me, receive him. And Paul goes on to say, and, and then Paul took a, a position on this. It, it's clear that he believed that Onesimus has changed. Now, that's what, that's on first glance, that's what you think. But what Paul is doing is not trusting Onesimus. Paul is trusting that God can change Onesimus. See, sometimes we want to see um, evidence of somebody change. Who are we to look for evidence of somebody change? What do we know? What, what how can, we don't see nobody's heart. Paul is saying, because I know that the Lord can change on this, but I'm going to act like, I'm going to live like I know he's changed. Look at what, look at what verse 18 said. He said, if he have done you wrong, or if he owe you any money, put it on my account. Now, that's a strong statement. Paul didn't check, I can, I, I'm sure he didn't check 
uh, Onesimus' credit. <laughs> I'm sure he didn't see how much money he had. I, he didn't even call Philemon and say, hey, how much he owe you? No, that's not what he did. He says, I believe so much in the fact that God and his power can change a life that I, Paul, am willing to be, go on the record and co-sign for him that if he owes you any money, I'm responsible for it. Matter of fact, I don't even know that's a co-sign. That's just a sign. Paul signed for Onesimus and said, if, if, if he, if Philemon, if he owes you some money, whatever it is, I'll pay it. Again, reconciliation requires us to understand the transformative power of God for the re for the person that we're reconciling or we're coming back to and for us. It means, because see, to be honest with you, real reconciliation requires us to change. Like, sometimes we want somebody else to change, but sometimes it requires either a change in us or it requires us to live out what we preach or teach or live or act or, or, or say. And so Paul is simply putting it on the table and saying, listen, I want you to do treat him just like you just like you would treat me. Look at verse 19. Paul says, Paul, Paul says, just to be clear, Philip, um, Philemon, I want you to know that I wrote this letter. He said, I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I promise you I'll pay it. Paul said, I'm going to sign a, I'm going to sign a, I'm going to sign a, um, what's it called, promissory note. He said, I, I'm, I will repay it. I promise you, I'm writing this letter that I will repay whatever he owes you. He said, now listen to this part right here. He said, albeit I do not say to thee how, how owe it to me, even thine own self. Decide. Paul said, I'm not telling you how I'm going to pay it back. He said, just know it's on my account. Verse 20, he says, brother, let me have joy of thee in the Lord. Paul says, um, let me have joy. What is Paul saying when he says, let me have joy? Paul is saying to Philemon, show me in this matter. I, 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 your testimony is strong, but show me in this situation. See, some of the other times that, that Philemon may have loved others, maybe because they loved him. Maybe they came to his house to go to church. and they, He loved because they were there. But Paul says, now, Philemon, I know this is a difficult situation, but if you do it, you're going to give me joy because I'm going to know that you moved to a level of Christian maturity. Now, let me say this. This is not always easy, but it's what's required. This is always, this is not always easy, but it's what's necessary for us to really be demonstrative in our walk of who we are in Christ. Paul said, if you do this in the Lord, I will have joy in my heart. When he says, refresh my bowels, Lord, he said, I will be refreshed. I'll be revived. I'll be renewed. I'll be have joy in my heart in the Lord because uh, if, if you do this. Paul said, I got confidence in you. Know, look at verse 21. He said, I got confidence in you, Philemon. I have confidence that you will obey. And he's not saying obey me. He said, I'm have, I have confidence you will obey the word of God and the spirit of God that is in you. I wrote it to thee knowing that thou will also do more. And I said, Paul, God, I got confidence in, in who God is to you. And, and that's the thing. Paul said, I got confidence in who God is. You've shown you love the Lord. And so I got confidence that how you love the Lord will be manifest in the situation. He said, I know that God will also do more. And I said, Paul said, I got so much confidence that not only are you going to take and uh, forgive Onesimus, not only are you going to hug him, not only are you going to treat him like you treat me, not only are you going to show him godly love, but I also know that you're going to send him back to me so that he can continue work, to work with me. That's what he said right here. I know that thou would, uh, verse 21, that thou would also do more. And I say, Paul said, I'm not asking you to send it back, but I believe you will, because I know that you have a love for God and a love for God's word and a love for God's ministry. Sometimes when we're doing the work of the Lord and doing the ministry of the Lord, uh, there comes a time when we've got to demonstrate it in, in practical ways. And sometimes we might, might, might have to give up something to be a benefit to the larger body of Christ. It's verse 22. Paul says, but I want you to do this, Onesimus, I mean, Philemon. He says, I want you to prepare for me a room. He said, because I trust that through your prayers, I should be given unto you. Paul says, I know I'm locked up. I'm in jail. He said, but I'm so confident that through your prayers that I'm going to be released. How about that? Paul says, I'm locked up. And, and, and let me be clear about this. The Lord showed me this. Paul was locked up. And they, and they didn't, you know how now if you go to court, you got a hearing in 30 days. You got a preliminary hearing. And you got to, you know, got to get on the calendar. Paul was in jail. All he knew is he was in jail. But he knew he wasn't dependent on the magistrate judge, the state court judge, the superior court judge. He wasn't dependent on a legal procedure. He wasn't dependent on his defense attorney. He was depending, look at this now, on the prayers of God's people that he would be released from prison. How about that? How about that kind of faith? That you're so believe, you're, you believe that by, the prayers of the righteous does what? Avail as much. Paul said, I'm locked up, but I believe the prayers of, of the people of God that I will be the, given back to you. He said, so go ahead. 
and get my room ready because I'm coming. Because as soon as I get released from here, I'm headed to you because I believe that through your prayers, God is going to release me. Paul closed out. And this, again, is demonstrative, just like the end of Titus, that the church was growing. Paul said, you got a Epaphras, salute Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Epaphras. He said, Marcus, Aristocar Aristocarchus, Demas, Lucas, and his other fellow laborers. He said that the grace of God, the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Paul asked one favor, but not really a favor. Paul makes one request, but not really request. Paul makes one statement, not based upon his word, but based upon the majestic and powerful word of God. And in this request, he simply asked a Christian to be a Christian. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what we need to take from this. In terms of reconciliation and being drawn back into our, with our other brothers and sisters in Christ, all God is asking us is to be who we say we are. Lay aside whatever our wrong was, bring them back, treat them like nothing ever happened. That's the way of the Christian. Be willing to, to reconcile and to be reconciled. Be willing to show who people say you are. Be willing to show what you know and who you know. That you know the Lord and that you're in the Lord in order that reconciliation may take place in the body of Christ. It's very easy for folk to talk and whisper behind folk back and say stuff. It's difficult to stand strong and say, I forgive you no matter what you say. You know how somebody say, I love you no matter what? There comes a time in life of Christian, we've got to say, I forgive you no matter what. So that the body of Christ can be strong. Satan wants the body of Christ to be weak and he wants to stay at odds. God wants the body of Christ to be strong. It's his body. It's the body of Christ. It's the body of his son, Jesus. He wants us to be strong. And in just these 25 verses, he lets us know that, that was the way to accomplish that and to maintain that is through reconciliation one with another. I'm going to stop tonight at roughly 721. And I thank God for each of you. I pray that we prepare our hearts and minds for great worship tomorrow. As you come to the church, we get your mind ready to worship. If you're at home, get up, get ready to worship. Even as people are staying home, and I know some of y'all be out going other places. I'm going to go ahead and pass them. Some of y'all go other places. Y'all talking about, I'm not ready to go back to church. Get ready to go back to church, or at least get up and be serious about your worship in the morning. Amen? Don't get mad at me. Let's just take that. I love each of you. May God bless you. May God keep you. Let us close tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the majesty of your power. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the clarity of your word. We thank you for the instruction is your word. And we thank you, Lord, for the fact that your word transforms us. I pray, God, tonight you bless every household, every individual Christian, and every family that is represented tonight on the phone line and the Zoom line. I pray, God, tonight that you let your word get in our hands and feet that we can serve you better. Let your word, Lord, get in our mouths that we can declare your word to dying world. Let your word get in our hearts that we may grow in our inner man. Let your word get in our ears that we can hear your word over the winds of the world and the enemy. Let your word, Lord, get on our minds and in our minds that we might uh, have peace to pass us all understanding and the fire of darts to say will be quenched. Let your word get on our lips, tongues, both our lungs and throat. We may declare your word to a dying world, to each other, to ourselves. God, I do pray tonight that you let us have joy. Again, that you build a head of protection around us, that the fire of darts to say will be quenched. Let, your, let us have rejoice in you and let us give you thanks in all things, knowing that this is your will for those of us in Christ Jesus. We pray, God, tonight you give us the sleep of the righteous and let us have the joy that is inherent in having the right relationship with you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hold on, Zoomers. God bless your phone lines.